Welcome back to the Managing Expectations series. This is video number four, and we're gonna get really, really practical today. I'm gonna to give you a tool that I tend to use for a number of different things, whether it be my project list, whether it be my emails, whether it be the conversations that I'm having with people during the day. It doesn't really matter. Whether I'm thinking about stuff that I wanna do for dinner, I use this tool to help me manage my own expectations and manage those of others. Let's just recap quickly on the first three videos that we went through. The first one was about values and where expectations actually come from. So they come from your values, they come deep inside. We talked about where they have stemmed from even. We then went on to talk about thinking styles. So our thinking styles are driven by our values. In video number three, we then talked a little bit about behavior and particularly verbal behavior. So the should and assume that we need to get rid of our language if we want to be an inspiring leader. So now we're going to talk about a practical tool that you can use. So another behavioral thing, and this will require some behavior change. This will require a little bit of thinking change as well particularly if you're the type of person that puts very high expectations on yourself in particular. Never mind the expectations you put on other people, but the expectations you put on yourself are usually well higher anyway. So this hopefully will help you to start prioritizing some of those things that you need to be doing. All right, so the tool that I'm gonna to talk to you about, I like to call the four Ds. So the four Ds, four key Ds, that if you can get into your mindset and change your mindset and utilize this, it will help you along your journey. The problem I see in today's leadership world is that the leaders that are there right now get so trapped in doing all of the technical detail of their job, they forget about being inspiring or they might not know how to be inspiring, that's the other thing or they don't have time to be inspiring because they've got all this other stuff that they're trying to do. Now, as I said before, we're on a mission to change the world so that we have inspiring leaders. And we believe that you can be one of those leaders and you're gonna help us change the world to make it a much better place for people at work. This is the important mission that we're on right now. And this is why I'm telling you all of this stuff so that we can start this journey and start it now together. So the four Ds are gonna help you get some of that practical stuff done and out of the way, get it out of your head so that you can concentrate on one, your career journey and your leadership journey and becoming a kick-ass leader. That's what we want you to do. So let's talk about these things. The first D that I want you to understand, that I want you to absorb, and I want you to potentially change your mindset about is delegate. This is the first D out of four. Now delegate sometimes has a, a, a bad you know, a bad reputation, but it shouldn't. As a leader, this is one of the key skills that you need to understand. If you go through the whole Kick-Ass Performance program, we take you to Transform. So Transform is the ultimate program at the top. Now to get into that program, you have to have a lot of fundamental skills and you have to be demonstrating that you are an inspiring leader. But one of those key fundamental skills that we need you to understand and have is how to delegate and how to delegate well. Now, delegation is not about putting off work that you don't want to do. It's not about giving people opportunities when the opportunities aren't really there. So if I'm giving someone a task to do and they have to do it, it's not an opportunity. It's their job to do that. Opportunities are very different. Delegation and opportunity goes hand in hand when you have something that you generally will do in your job because that's where it sits in the structure that you do in your job or your leader does in their job if we're talking about them delegating to you, that they think or you think 
someone else's better place to do it. Or someone can learn from it. That's where the opportunity comes, is in the learning. So if you think, wow, I've got this fantastic person in my team, whether they be a peer, whether they be a, a person that reports to you, it doesn't really matter. If you think that they could learn from this, that it's going to help their journey, and by giving them the opportunity to do this, it's going to help them on their career journey, you just stepped into being a leader. If you keep it for yourself and try and do everything yourself, I'm here to tell you that's selfish because you're not allowing that other person to grow. You're not giving them the opportunity to grow. So think about delegation in a different way. The other way to think about it is someone else might be better placed to actually do the job. You're not great at everything. I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're not. If we go back to the thinking styles, you have a set of um, strengths. And your strengths aren't in every area as much as we'd love to think that they are. You have key strengths. Other people have key strengths as well. And the great thing about teamwork is being able to draw on those strengths. So being able to delegate to someone who's way better at the task than you are, you'll know that it'll get done and it'll get done well. And as far as the team is concerned, you're reaping the rewards of being able to draw on these people's strengths. So for me, when I was a manager, if I went in, if I was organising something, like say it was a training program, I was great at the development work. But good golly, I was terrible at the administration. I would forget to book the room. I would forget to book the catering, all of those things. I just wasn't good at it, so I would forget about it. But you know who was good at it? Our administration officer, she was amazing at this. So I would delegate that job to her. And I could rely on that she would get it done, there would be catering, there would be, the room would be set up in the right place, all the whiteboard markers would be there. If I did that myself, I'd be letting the team down. So by delegating to the right person to get the job done, the team benefited overall. So delegation, you need to think about it differently. It's not offloading work. Unless you're offloading work, then we don't do that. All right, so the next thing that you want to be doing and thinking about D number two, defer. So there are some jobs that when you do the assessment and go, can somebody else benefit from doing this job? Can someone else do it better than me? If you make the assessment, no, actually, I'm better placed to do this. I suspect that decision-making process has come in the middle of you doing something else. So do you need to drop what you're doing and do it now? Or can you defer? So that's the thought process that happens here. Can I defer? I'm not dropping it. I'm not getting rid of it. I'm not procrastinating over it. I'm deferring it to a time that's going to be better for me and better for my client to get it done. I can put more time and effort into it. So the way we do this is we talk to our client. We talk to the person that's actually provided us this job. We talk to our boss. We talk to our peers. When's the best time to get this done? Does this have to get done now? No, it doesn't. When does it need to be done? Sometime in the next two weeks. Great. I'll allocate time in my diary next Thursday to get this done. So I take it out of my headspace. I take it out of my inbox. I take it out of where it needs to be and I pop it into next Thursday. Defer. Now it's gone. You've got headspace. So you've either delegated work, gone, headspace. Deferred work, gone, headspace. Or the third D, which this one I think is the hardest one for people to do, delete. Can you delete these things from your life, from your working life? It's really important to clear out the clutter so that you can be a great leader. If you've got a lot of clutter, if you have a lot of clutter in your head, then you're not able to put the time and effort into your people, into leading, into creating a vision, into inspiring, into finding the best ways of doing things if you've got all this clutter in your head, if you've got all these emails in your inbox that are meaningless and you don't actually need to do. So let's take an example. An inbox is always a great example for this. 
When you get an email coming through, you can look at it straight away. And if you do look at it straight away, you make a decision. Can I delegate? No. Can I defer? Mm, I can. Do I need to? Can I delete? It might be something that you don't really need to know about. So delete. If it's something that you've already dealt with, Delete. If it's something you've already delegated, delete. If you've deferred it to next Thursday, delete. You need to create headspace. You need to create space in your life to actually get a really meaningful job done. Okay, so the last D in our four Ds. Do. Once you run through this process and ask yourself, can I give this to someone else? Do I have to do it myself? Can I do it now? Can I do it later? Can I delete it? Then do it. If you need to do it, do it. The problem is, is people do it and they'll whinge and complain about having to do it. And the reason generally that they're whinging and complaining about having to do this stuff is because they haven't gone through this process. And they probably could have deferred it to someone else. It probably is somebody else's job. But they've taken it on themselves. In the program, we talk a lot about understanding ourselves and understanding others. And we really deep dive into where that sort of stuff comes from. Because we can be a bit of a martyr sometimes. And that comes from a place. We talk a lot about that, particularly in the influence and the transform programs because they're sort of higher level skills of deep diving and getting that stuff out of us. You've met these people before. You've worked with them before and you don't want to be one of those people because do they inspire you? I, I bet they don't. I bet they don't. When they're always playing the victim because they're always whinging and complaining because they have to do everything and they're working until midnight and it's because somebody else didn't do their job and blah, 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 blah. You've heard it all before. They're not inspiring. They're not inspiring at all. You don't want to be that one. You want to be the inspiring leader. You want to have a kick-ass journey and a kick-ass career. So... Utilize these tools. They're going to help you get there. Go through the four Ds before you make the fifth D, which is a decision on what you're going to do. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope this practical tool will help you manage expectations in a practical way. In our next video, we're going to go through another very practical tool and it's actually a little bit of a taste of what you're going to get once you get to the transform because I know you will get to transform. So thank you so much for joining me and until next time, be inspiring. <laughs>